There is no other way. Moving forward, I'm just going to call it the inkling. Hey guys, how are you doing today? We are talking about e-ink displays. One in particular. E-ink displays are great. And as the technology progresses, it offers more and more different devices that we can start playing with. It's all started with ebook readers, but now the displays are so responsive that you can make a notepad out of it and who knows what's gonna happen in a year or two. But what is happening now? Well, it's a new device for M5 Stack. Please meet M5 Stack Core Ink, or the Inkling. And this is not the first time I'm actually talking about M5 Stark e-ink development board. Do you remember this? This is M5 paper, something I was really pleased with and, well, it's slightly more expensive version, but if you're interested in a review and having e-ink display with the touch interface, yep, there's the video for you. But for now, we're going to focus on Core Ink. It's much smaller and ESP32 based development board. It's nice and a wide case, compatible with Lego bricks, so if you're into that, or if your kids are into that, well, you'll be able to take advantage of this. And as it is the case with all M5 stack devices, pun intended, well, it's featured back and really easy to use. But if you never come across M5 devices before, you're probably not going to be impressed by the specs alone. The main feature of this board, except for ESP, Pico D4, microcontroller inside is obviously the e-ink display and it is a really nice display as well it's 1.54 inch across 200 by 200 pixels with a really good refresh rate now the full refresh takes 0.8 seconds and the partial refresh only 0.2 seconds which is quite impressive and you'll be able to experiment with that Moving away from the screen, we're going to see a rocker, which you can obviously rock up and down and press it to approve, which gives you opportunity to create interesting menus. Everything that I'm going to list on this device is obviously configurable. Just below the rocker, there is a push button and one more at the back of the device. At the bottom, we have a USB Type-C charging, something I'm absolutely loving on each board from M5 stack, and a groove connector, which makes it compatible with an array of different sensors, expansion boards, and add-ons. You should seriously check out M5 store for the list of compatible items. It's long. On the top of the device, there is another button and an 8-pin header, which you can use for your liking. If that's not enough GPIOs, there is another 16-pin header at the back, which you can use to interface with all other devices connected via breadboard or directly. And, well, I think it's time to move into what's inside. BM8563 designation probably doesn't tell you a lot. However, you'd be pleased to know that this is real-time clock. Why? Because inside you'll find 390 millivolts battery that keeps this online. And it makes sense to have a real-time clock inside for two reasons. First, you have an ESP32 with a low power course, which you can put to sleep and save a lot of power. And you can take it even further with a real-time clock. And online, a couple of people stated that they were able to lower the power consumption to 1.5 micro amps. That's minuscule and you'll be able to run this device forever and only wake it up to refresh the screen when needed. It's awesome and it assures longevity of, well, core ink in your projects. To close the list of features, inside you'll find a buzzer, which you can use to make sounds, LED to control, and a couple of magnets, well, to keep it magnetic or keep it attached to magnetic surfaces, because, well, why not? I've mentioned you might not be impressed by all that specification I just threw at you. Don't worry. There is another trick up its uh, M5 stack sleeve, which is wireless programming. Now, being ESP32 board, it comes with 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi and Bluetooth for that matter, which you can use to connect to the internet. And M5 stack takes advantage of it, providing you completely wireless programming. Well, and it does look like magic. Just check this out. UI Flow is available in two flavors. UI Flow is accessible via web browser or just standalone desktop app provided with every board. And 
Well, it's available in two different languages. You've got MicroPython and you have also visual interface which translates to MicroPython. And the best bit, all you have to do is press the button to upload the code and it's gonna run on your device. Simple as that. Now, if you find this too limiting, don't fret. This is still ESP32 board and you can still program it just the way you would any other ESP32 board. So take it to Arduino ID or your favorite ID of your choice and take advantage of existing libraries. There are lots of them. Using UIFlow is simple and without even prior experience, you'll be able to put together a small script to run. I mean, hooking up the servo to this thing took me only like two minutes and I was able to control it with a button. I actually have an interesting project in mind involving that servo and 1500 googly eyes. If you're curious, well, I guess you'll have to follow me now. So back to the development board. Now, M5 Stack lists this for $35, which is significantly cheaper than M5 Paper. You will obviously sacrifice on the screen size and attach interface that comes with M5 Stack Paper, but if you want to get started in an easy way with e-ink displays and see what you can achieve and how long you can extend the life of that battery powered device, well, it's a great development board for you to try. Also, thanks to incredibly rich ecosystem from M5 Stack, you'll never find yourself short of uh, components or ideas. Plus, anything that has a groove compatible connectors, you'll be able to link it up and start programming. So if you are interested in the description of this video, you're gonna find an article with a little bit more details, a couple of links where you can get these devices, but uh, be aware that uh, they disappear quite quickly. So I've linked a couple of different stores that you can check out and see if they're in stock. And well, I guess what I'm going to say is thanks to M5 Stacks for sending me one of these and I'm looking forward to tinker with it a little. So I guess it's time to say goodbye, but before I do so, Bear in mind, if you're new to this channel, I do not have a posting schedule, so you know how YouTube works, I'm not going to teach you that. But I would strongly recommend you to follow me on any given social media so you could get heads up, some snippets of the projects I'm working on, and then engage in a conversation. As for now guys, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video pretty soon. Take care, bye.